My name is Dr. Theo, by the way. I introduced earlier. You guys knew who I am already. Uh, this talks about posture. Uh, one of the biggest uh, common perceptions is there's such thing as bad posture. But in reality, uh, posture is controlled by the brain. And the brain is always orchestrating where your body needs to be. So the first thing I do is talk about the brain. Uh, this part of the brain is called the cerebellum. It's back here. This part controls your posture. And it's totally unconscious. Uh, this frontal cortex, this front part, is involved with conscious thought. Uh, this part, like I've told some of you guys before, is called the limbic system. Uh, this part controls emotions. Uh, emotions are responsible for our posture. They're, they're hardwired with your cerebellum. Another part of the brain that's controlling your posture is the occipital part. This is the back part. This part controls your vision, or it's associated with the vision. It doesn't control your vision. It just, this is the sensor in the camera. So what happens when you see is light hits the eyes, it enters this part of the brain, the information, and then your brain processes the information, and then the image comes up. So anytime your head is out of position, your field of vision would be off, your brain will tell your cerebellum to reposition your head. This will make sense, I'll go over it again. Um, the ears also play a role, which is the, the temporal part of the brain. So ears control head position. You have fluid inside your ears to help you do this. Anytime the head is out of position, your body will recalibrate you. So ears, eyes, and emotion are the, the biggest indicators of posture. Any questions with that? So, like I said earlier, there's no such thing as bad posture. Your brain is just telling you which direction to move in. And a lot of it is controlled unconsciously. Even emotions are unconscious. Most of us can't control our emotions. We're not supposed to. If we feel angry, we feel angry. If we feel sad, we feel sad. Any negative emotion, it's okay to feel. It's just, we can't hold on to them for too long. Like I was talking about earlier, um, if there's a negative emotion like anger, we can't be angry for longer than 24 hours. Anything above that 24 hour time frame, it'll start building plasticity inside the brain. So we call that memory. So we have an experience, whatever that experience is, it could be a, a fight with our parents when we were five years old because um, we wanted a toy in the toy store. And then we saw our sibling get something that we didn't. And then we suddenly we tell our parents or tell ourselves, why does mom and dad love my brother more? Or why does my mom and dad love my sister more? And it just happened to be their birthday like the previous week. After that, you feel like you're, you're neglected. You don't feel like you're loved. And if it lasts more than 24 hours, you build a memory. And then that memory becomes your reality, at least a, a portion of your reality. And then those thoughts cause suffering. So suffering is a perceptual thing. Uh, most of our stress is perceptual. There's no such thing as stress that comes from nowhere. There's always a story involved. And that story is a movie played inside our brain. And because of those stories, it leads to certain postural conditioning. So. Bad posture starts from a very young age when we begin to be judged. Like in school. We'll take exams or our parents will compare us to other kids, which is very normal for Asian parents. And then we'll feel defeated by it because perhaps we're not good at mathematics. Maybe we're good at sports, but parents didn't value that. So then because of those belief systems, it causes your posture to be a certain way because anytime we're in disempowered or not empowered, our posture will be like this. Pretty much any negative emotion. Anger, uh, sadness, grief. This, it'll send our body like this. Generally, you don't see an angry person like this. You'll see most sad, angry people in a flexed, defensive position. So if you can imagine going to school every day and being tested, that leads to certain type of body positions for our body to 
to remember. And since we're not encouraged in school because only about 10% of the students actually do well, uh, we're, not in, we're not being reinforced with positive language. Unless we're lucky enough to have parents that did it. I wasn't. My parents are very hard on me. They're very Asian. So if I did, I, if I got a B plus, they'll tell me to get an A next time. If I do something wrong, I get like a C, they'll tell me to do better. And then they'll start comparing me. So posture is, is instigated from a very young age. And a lot of it has to do with our stories. And chiropractic, at least in this practice, we ask people about their stories. That's what's really going on with a lot of people's pain and suffering. It could be a story of them working too hard. It could be a story of them uh, sacrificing themselves for their families. It could be a, a story of them being angry at the world. It could be a, a story of them of not being hugged enough when they were young, uh, feeling left out. And again, sometimes it's perceptual, sometimes it's not. You guys following me? Um, so going back to the mechanical parts of posture, like I said earlier, when the head is out of position, your brain will calibrate you. The spine does this. So this first bone is called the atlas. Uh, it controls pretty much every organ in your body. Uh, the brain stem goes through this area. Could you get the poster for me? The, the, the spinal cord one? When this Atlas is out of position, it puts pressure on the brainstem. Like I said earlier, the brainstem controls every organ in your body. So anytime the atlas is out of position, the fluid inside your ears is out of balance. I think we need it against here. Excuse us. I forgot about this. Oh, we'll put it on top, that way it's easier too. So this is the diagram of the brainstem. You guys that have been here seen it already but it's always good to listen to something two or three times. That's how we get stuff. Um, in fact, even till today, I'm still learning about the body and I talk about it every day. Um, I learn from people like you guys. Um, anyways, when the atlas is out of position, your brain will calibrate you. The ears and the eyes help you do this. So when this bowling ball is out of position, this is good. When it's out like this, this is how it looks like on the side. There's tension on this area, this, this uh, lower brain stem. It puts tension and then your body will automatically shift you according to wherever this is positioned. So atlas is out like this, brain will tell our body to do this. In severe cases we call it scoliosis. Are you guys aware of what scoliosis is? No? Scoliosis is when the spine is crooked, it's like an S shape. So most of scoliosis happens from atlas position on a mechanical level. And then of course there are stories involved too. So it becomes a neuroscience, the science of how the, the mind works. But I'll go over that a little later. So a lot of things can be prevented and corrected at a very young age. Unfortunately, most people don't know about chiropractic until they have pain. Um, and this is when I tell people in this practice, pain is our friend. It, it lets us know that something's wrong. Some of us just need to be in a little more pain than others because we're just taught from a young age to be mentally tough. And if it's pain just a little bit, uh, you don't tell people because it's a sign of weakness. Sound familiar? Yeah. So let's see, I talked about head position. I talked about any questions about what I just talked about. Just by adjusting your bone, can the emotional be erased off? Yes, that's the idea of chiropractic. So when we put a force into the spine, we're, we're correcting it, we adjust pretty much every single segment in the spine that needs to be adjusted. But we always look at the atlas first, at least in this practice. Because the atlas is the main guy. Even if someone's suffering from low back, lower neck pain or low back pain, we have to look at this top part first because your head follows where the body takes it. So anytime the head is out of position, the atlas needs to be corrected for this. Um, out of all the structures, it moves the most. 
75% of the motion on your neck is done at the atlas. And you also have nerves, a lot of nerves that run through this bone. Uh, the nerves that run through this bone, or the activity, is more than the entire spine combined, which is significant. Any signal from your organ to your brain enters the atlas or goes through the atlas. Any signal from the brain to the body goes through the atlas. And some of these signals are mixed in with mental impulses, like our thoughts, most of them, because we're always thinking every day. Most of us have trouble not thinking, so a lot of people that complain of not meditating is, their complaint is, I can't stop thinking. Meditation is about turning it off. So going into that, there's two primary pathways through our nervous system. This blue pathway is called the parasympathetic. This turns off the organs, just to simplify it. This is called the sympathetic, the red pathway. It turns on the organs. So when you have a signal from your brain to tell your heart to contract, I'm simplifying it, it's a lot more complicated than this. The, the signal to contract will go through the vagus nerve here, and then the heart will contract. When it contracts, it pushes the blood through our body. When it relaxes, it allows the blood to go back into the heart. And that's how our heart works. Pumps, blood sends out, contract, I mean uh, decompress, blood goes back in and it keeps doing this like a pump. When people get high blood pressures, because these pathways are out of, out of sync, because they're thinking too much, because their bodies can't turn off, and then in the morning they drink a lot of coffee, like what I did this morning. My excuse is my wife just gave birth and I, I'm not sleeping. And I have this talk, so I drink coffee, I confess. But we, we live in a very overstimulated society. I'm going, go ahead. So you mean coffee is not good for the posture? No. Uh, ideally, we should wake up feeling inspired. If we wake up feeling grateful and inspired, uh, just breathing air would be enough. Really. You breathe in air. Even if you think about it, just breathe. Breathe deeply and think about how thankful you are to the breath. Just do it right now. You actually feel good, right? So oxygen is very powerful and because, again, we're overstimulated society and because the brain always looks at the mundane as mundane because we're, we're, we're accustomed to it, you'll take it for granted. And when we take things for granted, we lose a lot of, we lose sight of a lot of stuff. And that's why conditions are created or perhaps wives that yell at us are created for us to get back into sync, like spend more time with the kids. Uh, you're not listening to me. So those words will be act of love. Make sense? Therefore our symptoms are act of love. Symptoms like pain. Symptoms like high blood pressure. Symptoms like cancer. Cancers happen when people don't listen enough. So the lesser you listen to your body and the lesser you listen to the world around you, the more likely you are will you, you the more likely you are to become diseased. So when your father or your mother is telling you, stop working so hard, that's a cue for us to take a break and meditate and not be so active up here. But then we'll convince ourselves I have to do it for my family. I have no choice. And as as much as as long as we have a lot of have to's in our lives, it creates a lot of conflicts because those have to's are not want to and anytime you have to do something is not empowering and when things are not empowering it affects your posture you guys following me? so the best language we can ever have is I want to I want to show up to work I want to work for my family and then if you really don't want to show up to work after you say that because you don't feel it it's a really important thing to audit yourself and ask yourself, what can I do to change this environment? Do I have to read a book? Do I have to go to someone that can give me advice? Do I have to go to a seminar? Do I have to go to a talk so the doctor can remind me of these things? So again, that's what symptoms are, are meant to do. Follow me?
Where was I? Before I went into a tangent. Never mind. <laughs> so, you were asking me the symptoms, right? Yeah. Yep. So, going back to posture. Any volunteers? I'll do a little posture analysis. Someone that hasn't been here. I guess it's only between you two, since you're closer. <laughs> so, you guys, have, you guys that have been here have seen this already, but it's always good to be a reminder because we can't see our posture the way it is. So, when you look at this gentleman, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Bala. Bala. Yeah. yeah. When we look at Bala, the first thing I normally look at is head position. Um, it's actually pretty neutral, at least in the, the, the head carriage. Some people come to me and their head is much more forward over here. Uh, but if we look back here, just look at the, the TV, please. Turn your body around. When we look over here, we can see that the head is slanted over here. You guys see? I'll rotate you a little more here. Yeah, just look at me. You see the head slant? Uh, this can happen as early as birth, which I didn't talk about earlier. I'll explain in a bit. So since the head is slanted over here... You have to move a bit. Nobody can see. Yeah. When you oh. Thanks. Since the head is slanted over here, we can see the spine curve a little bit. He's leaning a little bit to the left. And because of the leftward leaning, you're actually putting unequal pressure down here. You can feel it, right? Yeah. If I put you over here, how does it feel now? Put your, your head over here. How's, how's your posture feel? How's the weight distribution feel in your body? Okay, there's a balance. Yeah, it feels balanced? Yeah. Some people say it feels crooked, but if he says it feels balanced. Uh, this is his normal. Posture is controlled by the norm. Following me? So, just have a seat. So, going back to what I said earlier, the first thing I said, the part in the brain called the cerebellum always positions us perfectly. So there's no such thing as bad posture. For Bala and most people that have whatever position they need to be in, the brain's desire to correct them in that position is making them healthier. So here's the, the brain twist in it all. If it's putting tension on them and if it's giving you back pain or if it's giving you shoulder pain, how can it be good? The very clear answer is the body has no choice. Just like when somebody smokes. The body doesn't like it, so from the smoking, it actually causes damage in the lungs, and then the body has no choice but to create cancer. The body didn't want to form cancer, but it had no choice. So with most of language that happens in our life, there's always this duality to everything. When there's a positive, there's a negative. Feel me? Just like if I, I was a teenager, or I finished university, not university, I was in secondary school, just finished secondary and served NS. I decided to party a lot before I went to university. And if I keep doing that, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm meeting a lot of people. But if I do that for a long time, I don't get to study. And if I do study, I won't be thinking about it, so I won't do so good in school. So when you have fun, there's a negative behind it. Follow me? Even having a family, there's negative aspects. Of course, we weigh the pros and cons before we, we even have kids, and it's worth it for us. So we have kids, but there's more responsibility. We got to work harder. We can't quit our jobs. So then we convince ourselves we have to do it for our family. And then un invisibly, we, we show our children that it's okay to stress and not like your job. So then it becomes a vicious cycle. So most of our misalignments have to do with how we orchestrate our life and how we position our, ourselves. And we always unconsciously pass things on to our children, including me. So I'm not speaking on a high horse here. I'm a human being, so some things I do, it's, it's right. Sometimes I do things that are wrong unconsciously. And then it leads to belief systems. Those belief systems create posture. Following me? So, any questions with that? Yeah. 
change and then would it actually like uh how to say that can can a bad posture be adjusted without like chiropractic yes it just takes a lot more energy because when things so thoughts are energy first and then eventually those thoughts let's say i was really um depressed no let's go way beyond that let's say i was told a lot of negative things when i was young like you're you're no good you're no smart i get depressed i begin to eat 20 years later i keep eating i'm obese now so even though the thought it started off as a thought the depression manifested into obesity so then you need to see a personal trainer you need say, a psychotherapist for sure to deal with your depression and you got to exercise I mean you got to see a dietitian so you got to exercise you got to see a dietitian maybe a nutritionist too sometimes they're one in the same and then you got to see a, a therapist so chiropractic is just an outlet for people to get support and as long as we're human we, we need support from others no one can do anything alone like I'm doing this talk right now with my staff it would be very hard for me to do it by myself so thanks they weren't listening <laughs> yeah you're welcome yeah um, so yes it's possible it just takes a tremendous amount of energy you gotta read a lot of books uh, because you're not filled with knowledge about health and well-being so theoretically you would be able to adjust yourself if you're given a certain blueprint but it would take a lot of mental energy and discipline to do so and you gotta exercise a lot later we'll give you exercises to do for your posture so theoretically yes most chiropractors would not even go here they wouldn't say you, you don't need chiropractic but theoretically you don't uh, realistically you can benefit from getting adjusted I've been getting adjusted since I was a kid and sometimes we have experiences in life that we can't integrate or sometimes it's just a stressful day at work or a week at work we need to get adjusted we need to talk to our friends we need to complain a little bit to our spouses that's part of the that's part of why we have communities does that, does that answer your question? And then you got to give yourself very empowering language too. And then you got to do a lot of yoga and all that. So you can correct yourself. It's just easier to, some, to see someone like me that can actually physically adjust the bone. And since I have a knowledge of the, the neurological system, it would be ideal to get adjusted. You would have to literally like transform yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually to really correct yourself but that's where the real correction happens it's just whether you provide yourself an environment to do that like going through this talk even though you got adjusted just now it, it helps facilitate it. any questions? so chiropractic is really about opening possibilities for people and giving talks like this. In fact, I don't even like public speaking before. I'm still uncomfortable doing it. But I do it because I feel so drawn to pass knowledge on to people and really change their lives. Just adjusting people didn't feel like enough for me, even though it's, it's enough to, to earn enough and take care of my family. But I feel like I should do something to facilitate an environment for people to really change. So that's why I'm here. Any questions? Any other questions? This is a life size size um, of the brain, by the way. Our brain's only this big. And it does a lot of unconscious things that we're not aware of. Let's say 10% of our brain is only being used, but in reality, all of it is being used all the time. It's just the 90% is totally unconscious. We don't have control over it. I don't think about my muscle contraction. I don't think about my posture. I don't think about how I just digested the big meal I ate. I just, I'm just digesting the food. And the most amazing thing is when I'm digesting it, it's breaking it down to fundamental parts. So think of it like this chair. If I were to de 
decompose this chair, I would break it up into fundamental parts. I would break apart the, the thing that makes plastic. I would break apart the fabric. I would break apart the cushion that's inside of it. It would just be dust. Our, our body's doing that when we actually eat the food that we eat. It's taking a piece of meat, it's breaking it down to calcium, it's breaking it down to protein, it's breaking down the fats into um, amino acids, it's breaking down the proteins into, um, no, sorry, My amino acids is protein. Yeah, fatty acids is fat. And then it breaks, we, it, the rice that I just ate is breaking down to glucose. And all the minerals that are inside that meat or in that vegetable. We're unconsciously doing, and then these parts are used to build our body. It's building up the bone. So like I said on the last talk, most, most of the time when bone is built, is being built from stress. Stress is what builds bone. So when we're moving in and out, there's stress on the bone and then that gives us the bone signal to grow. And that's why exercise is very important. Because when we exercise, we put stress on the bone and then the bone grows. So the reason why the bones look like this is because there's muscle pulling on it. That's equal to stress. But you can only have the muscles pulling if you're exercising. Follow me? Most people in the back have tight muscles. So when the muscles are tight, they're actually stabilizing you, limiting your range of motion. So then the muscles are not getting the full range of motion. So doing things like yoga, uh, swimming would really help because it lengthens the, the muscle. When muscles have, when muscles have a larger surface area, they handle stress better. So anytime we have large, large surface area, it's better for our bodies. When we have good posture, we have a larger surface area. If you crouch forward, just crouch forward. You feel your body getting smaller. It doesn't feel so nice, it's hard to breathe. So that's the benefit of having good posture. And then when we get more oxygen in our body, the cells like oxygen. Things like cancer won't exist. Following me? Yeah, cancers are uh, anaerobic cells, which mean they, they don't like oxygen. The minute you introduce oxygen into a tissue, that's when the cells die away. So exercise helps you, helps you do that, especially like running or doing some kind of swimming, cardiovascular exercise. Any questions with that? Yeah. Any, any questions regarding your conditions? What's your reason of coming here, if you don't mind? Shoulder pain? Any questions with your shoulder pain? Yeah. Atlas misalignment. You get shoulder pain from Atlas being misaligned. So the first thing that will happen when the, the Atlas misaligns is the shoulders tense up. When they tense up, they stabilize your neck. But when they stabilize your neck, it's hard to move. It also cuts the oxygen and nerve supply between your brain and your body. And when that happens, it's not good. Blood pressure goes up because the brain has to shout commands out more. It'll keep firing to the heart and then the rhythm will be off and then the blood, the heart has to beat harder. Every time there's no signal from here to here, the organs have to work harder. Make sense? Just like if I compress my arm like this. After a while, there'll be less blood flow. When there's less blood flow, my hands get numb a little bit. Yeah. How's our time? Good? Yeah. So, this is Dr. Sean. He, he just started this week. Have you guys seen him before? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, he'll introduce you, himself. I'm Dr. Sean. I grew up in London. Um, I trained in the UK and I was working there for a while, but then moved to Singapore and I've been working here since January. I was working for other clinics, but I'll be honest, there are other clinics in Singapore which don't always work as ethically and best for the patient. Little things at home. So it's not about, say, when you're doing big lifts, lifting TVs or fridges. It's about little things you do every day, whether it comes to picking up a pen or, you know, picking up a child. All these small things that will change and make sure they're not causing more problems in the future. Look at the joints in the spine. 
The main white part here is the vertebrae. This is the bone of the spine. These are going all the way along your middle. In between each one of these is a disc. Here is actually represented by a sponge. And we can see that it starts to squash and have more pressure on it. The spine, ideally, obviously everyone is a bit different because we do grow differently and the brain does develop differently. But ideally, we want to see a curve in, in the neck, a curve out in the low back, Sorry, a curve out in the mid-back and a curve in in the low back. So it would be a curve in. I can't do it with my arms, are too short. A curve <laughs> out in the mid-back and then a curve in again in the low back. This is all about making proper mechanics all the way through. And again, if there's a problem with the atlas, it will affect things all the way through and cause other problems like a scoliosis. So these little movements will help so that it keeps proper mechanics so that while obviously you're getting chiropractic care and things are being treated, that it's preventing other problems getting worse as well. So if everyone can stand up. Okay. Let's give it a little shake, get some movement. So everyone, I want you to show me how you would try to pick something up off the floor. So start first. That was honest. <laughs> I like it. No, what if we really do pick things up like that? We do. The little thing here is, I asked everyone, everyone did something a little bit differently. It's not necessarily about how you're moving your legs and how much you're moving your arms. The little thing here is to try and make sure that, say from here to about here, especially when you're lifting something that's heavier, or especially if you're having to bend a lot further, to try and keep that fairly constant, just to reduce some of the pressure on the spine. So the idea is what we call a hinge. So instead of, say, coming forward and curling, pushing the bum back a little bit, like you're trying to, say, close a drawer behind you, and keeping the spine in a nice neutral position. So, you want to show me, so, from here, come to the front, sorry, you've been picked on a little bit today. <laughs> <laughs> so coming from there, looking forward, which is good. Got a nice curve here and curve here. What I want to see is the bum coming backwards when you bend. So not as much at the top, just the bum coming backwards there. Good. And it's this small movement that will help, say, not just when you're trying to pick things up, even when you're getting out of a chair. If people are in a chair and they're coming up and they're curling through here, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the muscles, on the ligaments, and all through the spine. So by having just that little change in posture and standing up, it'll make things easier. And this should be the same thing for picking up small items off the floor, or even, no, again, trying to pick up bigger things too. Basically, what he's saying is, when you pick up stuff, try to lift your ass up in the air as much as possible. Because <laughs> when you do that, you get curves. When there's curves in your spine, it, your, your, your body can handle more stress. So that's the function of our curves. They, they dissipate um, energy through our system. Whereas if something's straight, it doesn't handle so well. So when you look at a suspension bridge, we can see the cables, like gold, the Golden Gate Bridge, where I'm from it's able to handle a lot of stress and it makes it much lighter when you have less materials. So suspension bridges are very good with that. Our spine has suspension. The curves act as that. You want to go over exercises that can be for good for posture? Um, any particular exercise you prefer? Any type of core. Yeah, what do you do since you go to the gym a lot? Uh, well, <laughs> a lot of things. Um, one, well, we can go over a plank. Yeah, a plank. yes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, do a plank. Do a plank, Doc. Okay. Okay, for a simple plank, the idea is similar as we talked about before, so it's about keeping your core constant. You can try if you want to. You guys can try. Just find yeah, if you have a knee problem, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. knee problem is okay, but the rest. So I'll start simple. We'll start as we go through, and then we'll build it more up. So start, you can do on the knees, and with the hands out here. And the idea is again, you're keeping a nice, even spine the whole way through. Making sure as well that you're squeezing on your on your core as well. This doesn't mean sucking in, this means pushing out, creating a nice wall of muscle to help protect everything when you're doing it. And it'll build a bit more strength so that when you're doing things, especially rotating, it'll give you more stability. If it's a bit too easy, we can come up onto our fingertips, sorry, onto our, onto our hands. Or we can do it onto our elbows as well, depending how, obviously, what's more comfortable. Something like this. Yeah. The spine should be straight like this, right? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, you want you know your back to be like a straight. It's, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. 
it's uh, harder than it looks. I show you. Yeah. Okay. Like that. You can start on your knee first. Okay. Then you do this. Just keeping the thumb ups a little bit more. Oh, uh, Ryan, I expect more from you, man. Ryan. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. Come on, You're Ryan. So I'm going to time you. <laughs> I expect at least two and a half minutes from you, man. <laughs> how long will you need? For this, it's not about trying to do the biggest thing in the world. I think the world record's like five or something hours. Something yeah, so if you have bad <laughs> knees, what you can do is you can just do the push ups like this. Yeah. And then if it's too hard for you to do this, then you can do something higher. Like at a bench, like this. Just like this. You could do it while you're watching TV. You know, since you're watching TV anyways, you might as well do something that's good for you. So just do that. Once you get better at it, you can do it on the floor. And it won't affect your knees at all. And again, 30 seconds at a time. doesn't need to be trying to break records or break out in a sweat. This is all about training your body to work well, rather than trying to build yeah, sure. muscles. Okay. Question. Even I did the plan, I can feel the imbalance. <laughs> Okay, this is again is why we start smaller, and this is why sometimes certain exercises like this might not be good to do straight away. Mm. Certain exercises like this are better when you're already in a place where there's a bit less pain and the subluxations are more free. Because otherwise, if you're building some of these muscles and training your body in this way, when the body isn't quite ready yet, yeah. it can make things a bit worse. Yeah. What are subluxations? Subluxation would be... Yeah, some of them don't know what it is, so... So we talked about the idea, we've got these different bones, each one with a disc in the middle. If there's one of the bones coming further across, it's going to start putting more pressure on one of these nerves. And this subluxation can happen in the spine, it can happen in the joints, it can happen anywhere where there's nerve supply, which is all the way through your body. So when there's more pressure coming across, pressing on these parts here, it's going to affect how they're working. If you think of it like a garden hose running across the floor, if you put your foot on it, or you turn it, it's going to affect how the water runs through it. It's the same here, but at a very, very sensitive level. So all these small changes make a big, big effect in the body. If it's happening more in the low part here, this is your low back, it sends information to your low back, to your legs, all the way down to the toes. The middle part sends information to your mid-back, it sends information to your organs. And the top here, this is your neck, and it sends information to your head, your neck, your shoulders, all the way down to your fingertips. So subluxations here especially, as well as obviously effects of the atlas, can cause problems like tingling, numbness, weakness, and pain all the way down the arms and into the fingers. Does that make sense? Is so. there a name and term for subluxation? Misalignment, um, fixation. Nerve interference. Nerve, nerve interference. Yes. So we have mechanical subluxations and we have neurological ones. Mm -hmm. The neurological ones are the belief systems. Yeah, you can get a mechanical one that can create neurological. So if you're, you're fixated and you can't move so well, you're not going to feel so good. So sometimes when the body's not functioning well, it also affects the mind. It's not just always the mind and then the body, even though most of the time it is. Make sense? Now some of us are born with physical disabilities. And then depending on how we use our language, we can either make something of it or become nothing. Yeah. Anything else? Any other exercises? Yeah, any other exercises. Um, That's simple. Bird dog? That everybody yeah. Can do. Okay, so a bird dog. This one's a bit easier. Again, this isn't about being big and strong and sort of getting a sweat on. <laughs> this is more about training your body so that you're not doing these other movements which could be more harmful. So from here, keeping again a nice neutral spine. And the idea is you start, sorry about there, and start first with the arms. So you're lifting one arm. So you're not raising up. It's making sure it's just one there and all of this keeps constant. You can start with the other one, and then as it gets easier, working through the arms, you can start moving the legs as well. Again, trying to not have a big movement. Bringing the leg out, back in, and out, and back in. And again, even I'm not always the best at this, if things are getting too easy, trying to again keep things very constant, and coming out both ways. And again, I've seen people yeah. in the gym where they're raising their leg as high as they can, trying to... Like, yeah. kick if you can hold for longer, it's always better. So any exercise you do, if you can do slow, long contractions, it's always better. This, this, this is not only for the back, but any muscle that you exercise. Slow movement is better for the joints. If you do it fast, it, it puts more load onto your, your, your ligaments and your tendons. That's how you get injured. 
So slow movement is always good. Lighter weight, slower movement. In fact, most of the exercises we can do, gravity is more than enough. Unless we want strength because we're chiropractors and we adjust or you play kind of some kind of sports, then strengthening is important. But if you're just a normal person, uh, strength is not that needed. Make sense? May I clarify? Just now the exercises you taught us is to help to correct the posture or help to strengthen the posture. It's less about strengthening posture, more about strengthening the way that your body starts to think about movement. Because a lot of us are taught things like that we aren't really supposed to do. Say sitting for long periods of time, our bodies aren't made for that. We're made for doing, being very active. Mm -hmm. So sitting for long periods puts us in, comp in positions that we shouldn't really be in. It's the same even at school. A lot of schools, they don't really teach how to lift properly. Mm -hmm. I used to, um, when I was back in England, I had a patient. He grew up, I think, in Estonia. And he was saying in that part of the world, especially there, Bulgaria, they're taught how to lift properly at school. Part of it's because they have a big weight training program for the Olympics. <laughs> Partly it's because they know that it's going to benefit their children in the future. So in other words, anytime we lift something, we want it close to our body as possible. Before and after and during when we're lifting it. So just before we lift it, close the body as possible. If it can be directly on our legs, that's fine. And then when we put it down, we want it close to our body as well. The worst thing you can ever do is bend over and twist like if something's here, take the extra time to get under it rather than go like this. Yeah, this is asking for something like a slip disc to happen. When we rotate and lift, the, the rotation muscles aren't meant for strength. They're only meant to do this. Lifting muscles generally go in a, a straight line from here to here. Make sense? Yeah, like the chest, it goes here to here. The shoulders go here to here. The legs go here to here. This is pretty much a straight line. Not really a straight line, more like an arc, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. We want to... Yeah, we want to cut the distance between whatever we do, like whatever we're lifting, and where we need to go. Like even carrying like a backpack, you want it close to your body as possible. If it's hanging off to the side like this, it's going to put a lot of pressure on your back. And it's going to put a lot of pressure on your shoulders too. So if you keep it close, that's very good. So there's a way to describe it. So, so if you could make a fist like that. So this is when the spine is in a better alignment. This is when you're lifting something with good posture. Mm -hmm. Nice and straight. When I'm pushing down, you can fit it there. And if I add pure underneath the table, you have to fit it here as well. Mm -hmm. If we have it so the body's more twisted, we start to add the same pressure. Can you see that? Yeah, I'm not going to push hard, but it's not very comfortable. It's the same thing that's happening. Yeah, or if you put out your arms like this, and then you press down, it's, it's harder. So just to show you, if I press down, it's, it's harder. Yeah. It, if your arm is closer to like this, mm -hmm. and I press down, it's much easier. Yeah. yeah, the closer it is to your body, the harder it is for me to push you down. Mm -hmm. But here, it'll be very easy. So in martial arts, people are taught to throw each other from long levers. Yeah. Any other questions? So, sorry, so those with lower back, would you, would you recommend them do squats? Uh, it depends on the way they're doing squats. Doing it with, Technique. if they're doing it properly with weights, Without weights, without weights, just basic squats. squats. Would it be? As in, you mean squatting, say for exercise, or squatting for exercising. Exercising. Uh, generally, I would say again, spine needs to be in a neutral position as before. You see a lot of people where they start to dip down at the end. Mm -hmm. That's a fail. Right. That's where you're going to put a lot more pressure on that bottom disc and yeah. So when you get tired, don't push yourself and do it in a wrong posture. If you can't do it anymore, then just just stop, and then let yourself your body rest, and then you do another set. And once you get strong enough, you can carry weights. I highly recommend not putting weights on your shoulders, like the, the bar or a bell, unless you have proper training. But even then, it's, it's not really good to put weight on your shoulder because it compresses a lot in the neck. So if you're going to do squats with some weights, then carry some dumbbells on the side or something. And then just squat down like this. But most of the time, just doing a, a gravity squat is more than good enough for people. 
Use the chair. Yeah. If you want to get more difficult, then you just put your arms up like this, and then you'll, yeah, be harder. If it's like this, it's closer, so it's easier. Yeah. So weight training is not that. I like to lift weights because I, I need stronger strength for what I do. But most of us don't really need to go to the gym to exercise. There's plenty of stuff at the, like the park, where we can exercise in, like the pull-up bars that they have. So, any other questions? Are there any right ways to walk? Walking is, um, is unconscious. If, you, if your head or if you're, you're, you're aligned properly, you just walk the way you're supposed to walk. So, yeah, there's no wrong or right way of walking. I know they have like uh, running labs that teach you how to run in efficient ways. There's a science behind that if you're running long distance. But what I tell a lot of people, we're not engineered to run long distances in the first place. <laughs> we have physical limitations for a reason. Yeah. The physical limitations make us smarter. We build cars, we build airplanes, <laughs> we ride on MRT. <laughs> yeah, it'd be highly in inefficient to walk to work every day unless your work is like next door to your house or 10 minute walk or something. So physical limitations aren't bad. They're actually a good thing. It makes us think more. And then if we don't have time to because Singapore's working time is very long. We think of shorter ways to go home. Which one's quicker? Is driving faster if I have a car or do I take MRT? So, it's a good thing we have options here. What yeah? sitting posture? Because we're not actually mid for sitting, right? So, are there any better postures or weight distributions that we can do? Yeah. We should not sit longer than 20 minutes. If uh, more than 20, 20 minutes, you got to get up and move around. Um, but generally, if we want to keep a, a more engaged, actually, you want to talk about this? Yeah. So you show your sitting posture. So for a sitting posture, actually, the height you've got is better. Here is a bit lower down. But what you ideally want is that your feet aren't facing out, not flaring, nice and facing forward, making sure that you've got a slight arch in your low back. So if I know some chairs that have support, this can be quite good as well. And making sure that your shoulders are nice and back. If anyone that works in an office, there are little um, keys that we can give you, little ways to sort of position everything to make sure that, say, your mouse and your keyboard aren't too far away, that the screen is at the right height as well, so you're not having to look down or not stare up, that it is nice and in the middle. We'll post something on Facebook tomorrow with sitting posture at work. So just check our Facebook page, and there will be a post on postures to sit during work. Yeah, any other questions? So if I'm, I do have to sit for a long period of time and I do get like some lower back pains, are there any stretches that you can teach us to you know, like alleviate the, these muscle tensions? Yeah, an easy one to do would be um, just bending, stand up guys. Just bending forward, try to push your belly button into your spine. So it would be something like this. You should feel your spine pull apart from here. Sometimes you get actually little pops, that's okay. So just reach, push the belly button into the spine. This is the easiest one to do. And then if you guys have the time, or if you have the space, just you can do a lying down stretch. It'll be something like this, where you, sorry, I get this side. Something like this. Yeah, actually it won't look silly if you do it in class. <laughs> People will be like, oh, cool. <laughs> you start doing it every day and people will join you. You'll have like a stretching um, group. When we, were, when we were in chiropractic school, we actually, had, we actually did that. People got together and practiced like exercising to adjust people. And then we did stretches and all that too. We did yoga. So that would be an empowering way to, to create a community that will facilitate your health. You can do it at work, you can do it at school, you can do it in pretty much any environment. All it takes is one, one idea, one person to like 
you know, raise our hand and tell people. Yeah. And what about the neck part? Any exercise for it? Um, extension. So most of the time when we're, our neck is misaligned, it's misaligned in flexion. It's misaligned in a, a forward position like this. So all we have to do is do the opposite of the position that we're in. So just lean back like this. Yeah, just like this. And then if you want some rotation, just rotate like this. Look over. So basically you want to go in straight lines. You don't want to like rotate like this. Not in the beginning. You just do linear extension, flexion, lateral flexion like this. Lateral flexion on the other side. Rotation. And then you could do a coupled one. And this is a little more advanced. Just put your head to the side like this. And then lean down like this. You should feel a stretch along this part. So those would be good stretches to do. You guys feel it? You're very flexible. Or you're not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> so just stretches like that. It's the neck, uh, the lower back, of uh, bending forward. If you, can, if you don't mind laying on the floor, just rotate and then stretch your back. You got to do a lot like multiple times a day. What about neck strengthening? Is it bottom up? Not required. Yeah. yeah. If you do like swimming or any type of exercise, your, your neck muscle will strengthen anyways, as long as you have the, the neutral posture that Dr. Sean was talking about earlier. If your neck is not strong enough, then it's, it's probably being overused. So most core muscles are weak because they're overused either through fixation or subluxation in the spine, or just being static in a certain position over a long period of time. So then the muscles have to engage. So the forward head, head posture that I mentioned in the beginning puts a lot of strain on the muscles here. So then in order for your head to prevent from falling, the muscles have to engage. So by the end of the day of having your head forward of breathing or whatever, of course the muscles are going to be weak. Because when you're walking and moving around, your spine will strengthen anyways. You're using your muscles all the time. It's just not in the context of, of exercising. In fact, they did a study um, to a group of cleaners in a hotel. They asked these, these cleaners, do you guys exercise or not? Most of them said no. After that, they told them, well, every time you're working, you're exercising. Once they had perception that they're exercising, they actually lost weight. So knowing what's going on and knowing why you're doing it makes a difference. Like knowing why you're getting chiropractic care. Coming here to understand more about it. It's going to help you adjust better because of that. Or knowing why you're learning something in school. Which is really hard for teachers to, to get students to picture. The why is always the hardest. Right? We're not taught the why most of the time. We're just taught, remember this. And it kind of reflects into the way I was raised too. <laughs> I would ask my parents, why? Why? After a while, I get hit for it. <laughs> and then I stop asking. Not true. Yes. <laughs> not true for everyone? Yes. <laughs> modern mother. Modern yeah. young mother. So That's very different. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the why is always the the key to anything we do. And if we can't understand, we can't answer why, like why am I working in this environment or why am I here, then you should really reformat and construct yourself in a more conducive environment for you to to function in. Just like the the lawyer that I talked to you about. She didn't really want to do corporate law, so then she wanted to do something more rewarding for her, so she did family law. And she's open to choose the clients. If she doesn't like the client, she will, she'll just not take them in. So then she doesn't, feel, she doesn't have to feel bad about herself. Which is hard, because then you take a, a dent in pay or whatever. But at least you have peace of mind. Make sense? So, any other questions? Oops. Sorry, my fault. Yeah, so we talked about the exercises. 
Uh, let me ask you this. You worked in other practices. What was, what was, what was the reason why you came here? Uh, and how's it different? The other practice, I'll be honest, it was here, and they didn't care about patients at all. It's the honest truth. They didn't really care if people were coming in and getting better. They just hoped they were coming in as much as possible. And I've worked for a couple of companies here, and there's other ones as well, which are exactly the same, fortunately. Yeah. The, uh, the ideal intention in any profession would be to get rid of itself. If people don't need chiropractors anymore, that would be great. Oh, just have a seat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This way too long. Does that an effect in yeah. Doing it for too long. Do you only do it on one leg or do you do it on both legs? Sometimes you okay, very long. If you're doing it, say, for not just a few hours, doing it for weeks and months and years, over time, the actual shape of your hip will start to change. Mm. And once that starts to change, and actually the bone starts to change too much, it won't change back. So that's why you need to try and stay more neutral. If right. possible, if you are going to do it, again, making sure you switch. But there's a lot of people where, I, I know I used to do it when I was younger, favor doing one side, mm -hmm. and suddenly you're twisted in this way. There's also a hidden uh, chiropractic answer to this too. If you feel like you need to cross your legs here, it's because the, the cord is um, twisted. So when it's twisted like this, you need to do something to untwist it, which is to sit with your legs like this, across your legs. So crossing legs is indicative of spinal torsion. So adjustments can correct that. It's very hard to do yoga and correct it. Yeah. That's when something like network will actually be good. There's techniques out there that actually help with the torsion. And there are other things, even though I sh maybe I shouldn't talk about it, but I will anyways. Other, th other things other than chiropractic that can fix this. Like some body workers. Some people do special body work to actually take out torsion in the spine. I forgot the name, but Pavel, I met a person. Pavel Kola? Huh? Pavel Kola, DNS? That's one of them. Another one is... Um, Body image, not body imaging. I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'll give you access, so now you can search on the internet. But basically, there are, there are ways of getting movement. But it's much easier to fix uh, a fixation that's uh, structural than to fix a core that's deep in here. So that's why, as bias uh, ideal, I would tell you get adjusted is better because it, it cancels this thing out. Whereas if you get like a, a massage, um, it'll take about a few hours of, of real body work to get the tissue. Most of the time you can't uh, do anything to the cord anyway because the bone's in the way. Pilates, Pilates is more for strengthening. And then if you really practice yoga at its fullest, then it will be more like inside out. In fact, any type of body work or chiropractic, when you get to its ultra deep level, you'll start getting very spiritual on some level. And not spiritual from a religious background, but spiritual in a, a inside out kind of way of looking at it. So why am I holding this tension? Why am I acting this way? In certain cases, uh, situations where people get rheumatoid arthritis, it's, when it's autoimmune disease where the body attacks itself. What, what am I finding myself for? Rheumatoid is a, a genetic disease that's arthritis. So your joints hurt because it's in your blood, which is different than osteoarthritis, which is something like what we see. We, someone gets self-fixated or fixated, and we undo the fixation and restore motion back to the joint, and then the joint becomes normal. That's osteoarthritis. Rheumatoid is blood. Any other questions? Okay, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. Thank you. This is our second time doing it. Yeah. Uh, we will do talks uh, every two to four weeks. So if you guys have anybody, any friends or family that would be interested, just invite them. <laughs>